Right, good morning and thank you very much for attending. Today I'd like to talk about JGrants that we are building and managing, as well as to share our vision on how government services can be better delivered. So the content of the presentation looks like this. So we'll give a quick introduction and then um, I'd like to talk about JGrants and finally um, I'd like to talk about our vision on the delivery of government services whose architecture and components would closely would be closely related to JGrants. So a quick introduction. Um, who I am. My name is Mori Sugimoto. My screen name on Drupal.org is Doc Mori. I've been around in the community for a long time, I suppose, and I'm based in the Netherlands at the moment. And who we are, we are Annai. We were established in 2007. We, speci we specialize in Drupal and we're based in Japan. Uh, having said, we are fully distributed. So someone like myself who's based uh, abroad also works for the company. And what we do, um, we specialize in Drupal, as I mentioned, and um, we build, manage, uh, we build and manage enterprise solutions. We provide site audits and consultancy, and we contribute, which I will explain in a bit more detail later in the presentation. And we also empower developers. So we, for example, supervise the Japanese translation of Acquia certification exams. We also published the first Drupal 8 book in Japan and we are working on the D9 version at the moment. And uh, we are also developing hands-on Drupal training system, uh, which comes with an automated evaluation uh, feature. So um, with, the, with the system, um, you don't just follow instructions, but you, your actions on the website and code you write get evaluated automatically. And uh, after, after looking at many Drupal sites that don't follow best practices, we think we need to train more skilled Drupal developers and having a scalable training system like this would be a great help on that front. So that's what we do. Okay, so let me now move on to um, J grants. So unfortunately, um, we had to, at the beginning of the project, we had to sign this you know, piece of paper called the NDA <laughs> and because of that um, although there's a number of cool features and things under the hood we can't talk about it or we can't show you unfortunately but um, I'll give you a good overview of the system right so JGrants is a grants application management system um, that was built for the um, Ministry of Economy Technology and the Industry of Japan and METI is the ministry that is spearheading the digital transformation effort of the Japanese government. And um, the reason why um, they wanted to build J grants was because the existing um, application process for grants are very complex and time consuming. And for example, it's you know paper based. Uh, the traditional ones paper based. That says it all pretty much, doesn't it? So, you know, we need to um, use the postal service for that. And the, you know, form gets passed around within the uh, secretariat and so on. And um, there's, um, this is a Japanese business culture, I suppose, but um, there's this thing called um, hanko. Uh, it's, it's essentially a seal or stamp, which is used instead of signature in Japan and for for it being a physical object you can't for example sign documents while you're away from the office and if you don't have the the um seal with you it just you know adds more latency things like that um and um you know if there if there's any questions you'd have to make phone calls or they make phone calls um to ask you questions and if you're not present you can't answer you know um, and um, lastly, this is quite interesting, but um, there are hundreds of va variations to the process. Um, this is because each secretariat, as in uh, an office which um, handles uh, um, application process, 
um, each secretariat can design their own application process as long as they adhere to certain laws that pertain to grants. So um, there's no single process that you know all the all the secretariats follow, which makes it a nightmare to you know turn it into a system. So their um, their wishes were to first unify the varying processes and simplify the complex process so that we wouldn't have to handle um, so many steps or um, so many exceptions when we convert it into a system and also speeding up the process and also improving the user experience for example businesses only need to fill in their basic information once only um, businesses can apply for as many grants as they want and every time they have to fill you know their basic information um, and that's quite um, inconvenient and um, with with the you know new system they they wanted to allow businesses to enter it just once and forget about it so um, how we approached it we um, extracted the common denominator, if you like, from numerous processes. And then we simplify the process through BPR, which stands for Business Process Reengineering. And we adapted Agile methodology to accommodate changes. So um, none of us knew what the system was going to look like you know, when we started. So as the clients, as well as our understanding on the system deepened, it was inevitable to add new requirements or change existing ones. So waterfall just didn't work, so we didn't use waterfall. So um, main features for secretariats. Um, again, um, you know what's what's available for log team users is considered confidential, so I can't show you, show you screenshots and things like that, but I'll just explain uh, in words. So publication and management of grants information, configuration of, of approval and notification workflow per grant. So um, after unification and simplification of the process, we still wanted to give secretariat some flexibility so um, they can design their own workflow. And requesting and accepting reports from businesses after the approval of the application and also dispatchment of notifications for example if your uh, application gets accepted you receive notification and so on and as for um, features for for businesses uh, viewing and applying for grants of course and pre-filling basic information for easy application which um, i mentioned earlier and the custom temp save feature. This one's pretty cool. So there's a module for this on Drupal.org, but it uses the web storage. And in, in, in excuse me, in JGrant's case, sometimes multiple businesses use a single computer to fill the form. So we considered it um, not very secure. So we, we built our own system and also um, submission of various reports uh, which they are required to after their project starts and login via third-party authentication service um, called GBiz ID which is a government-owned uh, authentication service okay so let me now talk about our vision on the delivery of government services so um, we, um, I, I'd like to explain it, um, I'd, I'd like to make it clear that this is not like JGrants 2.0, but this is something that uh, we, um, we've been thinking as we built uh, JGrants. So in order to explain what this is about, let me first explain about the application process flow of grants and how it can be applied to other applications. So um, this is a very simplified um, workflow of what a uh, grants application process flow looks like. So it, it is, just so you know, this is not specific to JGrants, but it is a general 
application flow, even if you are um, you know, filling out the form by hand. So uh, at the beginning, you apply, you know, businesses apply for a grant, and then there's a validation. Um, and if um, all the information that's been requested is, um, is submitted, it goes through um, a selection process. And if it is accepted, the grants issued. And if it's not accepted, then it gets rejected. So that's a very uh, straightforward flow. And um, just so you know, I intentionally, um, I intentionally left out the reporting step, which would be um, somewhere on here, for uh, in order to make make it simple to to explain. Now, if you look at it, it's it's actually a rather general um, flow you might notice. So for example, um, if you're applying for passport, if you're applying for a passport or driving license, a certificates or allowances, benefits, the flow would more or less be the same, wouldn't it? Also, um, if you are getting married, you would um, notify the municipality that, you know, you've been married and you know it gets accepted and you get a confirmation or if you are if you are applying or if you are uh, requesting for your birth certificate it would still be more or less the same you know? or even if the government posts on RFP then you know companies apply for it and they either get the project or they don't so all these um, you know application process flow are strikingly similar. So different application processes share the same flow, you know, as we've seen. And in Japan, local governments are building their own system. I mean, each of the local governments are building a, their own system to manage such applications. And there are hundreds of municipalities in Japan. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of waste. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure we can build a system that caters for every process. So having said, um, you know, each process has some, some unique steps. So um, some processes um, and some processes are more complex than others. And some processes would have um, some steps which others don't have. So. Um, you know, it should be modular. Uh, some some steps should be pluggable or swappable, and it would also be really useful to be able to um, access the system via um, API, so that you can integrate with third-party services and applications. You know, uh, one important thing to note is that. Uh, large organizations are usually hierarchical and has a complex structure and managing user users access becomes a challenge if you just try to solve that with the roles and permission system in Drupal core so um, we built or we didn't build we sponsored the development of um, this thing called the subgroup module so um, we sponsored it and it was built by Christian van den Einde at Factorial. Um, he's, the, he's the maintainer of the group module, which some of you may know. So the group module allows you to manage user, user and content entities by creating groups. And you can create roles and permissions for each group. So, um, and it... Um, it still doesn't handle the, the hierarchy, so the subgroup module um, is there to, to handle that part. And um, this is the, the part where I mentioned, um, which I mentioned about the contribution. So in terms of contribution to the community, we've submitted various patches and organized Drupal camps and events, and this is the most recent contribution that we made. So with the subgroup module, um, by the way, this is available today, so you can you know start building it uh, today. 
and uh, with the subgroup module you can build hierarchies with groups as I mentioned and uh, permissions can be inherited between groups so for example um, users who belong to uh, the unit A1 and unit A2 have read access to um, some of the documents or some of the um, content entities um, which belong to uh, division A for example so with this you can configure quite uh, complex roles and permission inheritance between groups so to wrap up um, the key features of dgov would be um, complex access control uh, customizable workflow evaluation of applications bulk operations uh, payment handling and apis and we see that govcms um, provides not only its code but um, it's provided as um, software as a service and even platform as a service and we find it very interesting and we'd like to follow that path and we think that DGOV can benefit more than just a single country you know um, we'd love to collaborate internationally and also see it used around the globe as well so um, if you're interested uh, let us know and that's it for my talk thank you very much hello um i'm looking at the live q a uh well by the way thank you very much for attending um well if you have any questions um please um share you're welcome you're welcome thank you for lots of thank you messages much appreciated Um, okay, um, Tony, uh, there's a question from Tony. So is there a form of digital, oh, it moves. <laughs> is there a form of digital hanger for signing grants? Um, well, um, I can't talk about, um, talk, talk about, uh, J grants, but, um, in general, uh, we don't really at the moment use, um, digital hankers. Um, they are available. Uh, some some services provide those, but they're not very popular. Uh, many many companies um, or even officials don't really like it, so um, has a very limited use. Having said, um, there it, it's um, it, it it is quickly changing. Um, so in the last uh, few weeks, actually, um, one of the one of the ministers is uh, pushing hard to uh, abolish hankers. So um, yeah, it, it will, uh, it is likely to, to change, the, the situation is likely to change in the near future, but at, this, at the moment, there are, um, yeah, the use of digital hanker is not very uh, common. All right, um, another question from Bob. Um, do you maintain some kind of audit trail for the approvals? Um, I can't give you an answer for that <laughs> because um, it's it's related to the specification, uh, which is confidential. So sorry about that. Right? Yeah, there there are many questions I can't answer to be honest. Um, okay, any other questions? Right. Um, Well, we have 50 seconds. We, I, I, we can just, we can all sit and wait if there are any questions or. Let me look at the discussion just in case no, there's nothing. Cool. Right. Oh, um, yeah, I, I think the, the time's up. So uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, very much appreciated. Enjoy the rest of the event. Bye.